grandfather was named Avadis Jamgochyan. Uh, he had grown up in the old country in Agen and went to uh, Euphrates College in Harpert. He'd written some things that were had words like freedom and liberty and uh, uh, that were not viewed favorably by the uh, the Ottoman leaders at the time. So they had to get him out or he would have been in trouble. He spoke English quite well. He translated some English poetry into Armenian. He wrote some poetry himself, which had words that got him into difficulty with the Ottoman leaders because he talked about freedom and liberty. And the family uh, were prominent at the time and were distributors uh, in the Ottoman area of cotton goods from Manchester, England. So his family shipped him off to Manchester with my mother, who was just a young babe in arms. But the weather was unfavorable to him, lots of rain, and so he came to sunny California in 1911. I'm not sure, but he may have been uh, among the first Armenians that came to Glendale. Glendale now is uh, called Yerevan West sometimes. My father uh, came to the United States in 1903 and settled in Pittsburgh, went to college in New York, and became a manager in a factory in West Virginia, joined the Shriners and made a visit to Los Angeles where he met my grandfather, Jam Gochin, and his daughter, Elisa, fell in love with her, fell in love with Los Angeles, and moved out and became a, a resident out there. My father's nephew, George Ignatius, worked there, and my father kind of learned the rug business from uh, George. And later on, when my father established his own business, uh, George Ignatius went to work for my father. And eventually, he uh, uh, had a, a, a rug business of his own that was quite large. <laughs> I was in the Navy in World War II. I, was, uh, I spent four years uh, in the Navy in the, in the war against the Japanese on a small uh, aircraft carrier. We got into a lot of action. Uh, uh, we had a wonderful captain. Uh, we were struck by two uh, suicide planes uh, in the campaign against the Philippine Islands. But we saved the ship. Uh, we were able to control the fires. We lost a number of our shipmates and a number of our aircraft were damaged. But we managed to uh, save the ship. Uh, we eventually returned to uh, San Diego in the United States to be repaired and then went back again into the, uh, into the war. Uh, yeah, I spent about four years in the Navy. I got out. And I loved it. I learned a lot. I learned how to take responsibility. And uh, a young officer uh, gets a lot of authority. You stand watch at night. The captain's asleep. Uh, you've got the ship under your control. And uh, so that's, it's, uh, you, you, you learn to take responsibility. So I was grateful to the Navy. And I'm very pleased that uh, my grandson, uh, wants to become a naval officer. I was a graduate of the Harvard Business School, and I stayed on the faculty after I graduated. And with two other members uh, from the business school faculty and staff, we formed a management consulting firm uh, happened to start it in June of 1950, which was the beginning of the Korean War. We had not planned to do any work with the Defense Department, 
But they came to us and we did a lot of things. And so in the 1950s, for maybe 10 years, I worked on a number of national defense issues, including the Polaris missile, which was the highest priority uh, program at the time. And with that experience, when President Kennedy uh, was elected, I was asked uh, to, if I was interested in coming into the government. And after some thought, decided that I would like to do that. And I was initially an assistant secretary of the Army and then undersecretary. And then for three and a half years, I was an assistant secretary of defense. And finally, uh, for the last roughly two years, I was the Secretary of the Navy. And that was a great experience because I'd served as a naval officer and uh, uh, ended up being the civilian leader of the, of the Navy Department. A wonderful family photograph in the, uh, at the White House Rose Garden where I'm telling President Kennedy what a good job I'm doing for him, and he's paying no attention at all to me. He's looking at my beautiful wife. <laughs> uh, President Johnson I knew quite well. Uh, he was, uh, I had several opportunities to meet with him and brief the cabinet on some of the uh, programs uh, that we were uh, supporting in the Defense Department. Under President uh, Carter, I did some work as a civilian. I did a study on Defense Department organization and some other matters uh, in a uh, civilian capacity. But, you know, that was a long time ago. I'm going to be 102 in November, and so I'm talking about things that happened, uh, you know, 50 years or more. <laughs> My father was active in uh, many uh, Armenian affairs. Uh, he helped to raise money for the uh, NASR, the National Association of Armenian Research, which my daughter Sarah uh, led as executive director over a seven-year period. Uh, they built a beautiful building in the Boston area. Uh, and uh, she's just recently retired. I might mention, I, just in passing, my daughter, who is staying with me at the moment, is out at the Armenian church while we're here talking, buying Armenian food. She's getting a shish kebab and, uh, with uh, bulgur pilaf and uh, eggplant. Uh, I think a lot of the women from the church uh, uh, prepare the food. And it's very good. It really is quite good. Uh, I visited Armenia in 2006 uh, with uh, one of my daughters and one of my sons. Uh, and we visited the Republic of Armenia. And then we were able to go uh, to historic Armenia. But we had to go a roundabout way because the border uh, was closed. Uh, and, uh, but we visited Harpert, where my father had grown up, and uh, other, other places there. Uh, I knew a lot of Armenian people. My father's best friend was Aram Soroyan, who was the uh, colorful uncle of the writer William Soroyan. Uh, he came to our house very often. And Ruben Mamulian's parents, were close friends of my parents and came frequently uh, to our house. Uh, I knew Soroyan, William Soroyan, the writer. Uh, he was an interesting person to be with. Uh, my parents gave him uh, a book party celebrating his first book, which was called The Daring Young Man on the Flying Trapeze. And they invited a number of their friends to meet this a brilliant young writer, and Willie was uncomfortable with all of the people asking him questions. So he came to me, I was maybe 13 years old at the time, 
He said, is there any place in this house where we can go and read the funny papers? So there was a bedroom off the kitchen, and we went there, and we were reading the comic strips from the newspapers, and my father discovered us there and took Willie back to the party. The Secretary of the Navy invited me over for lunch one day, and we talked about this and that. And when it was time for the lunch to end, he said, oh, by the way, I'm going to name a ship after you. And I said, what? <laughs> and uh, indeed he did. Uh, it's an Arleigh Burke class. Arleigh Burke was a great naval leader, and this class of ships is named for him. There are a number of them. And uh, it was built uh, uh, down in uh, uh, the south uh, of the United States over a period of several years. And uh, uh, I visited uh, uh, at various stages of its construction. They have asked me to come. And usually sh their sponsor of a ship has gone to his or her reward up in the heavens. <laughs> And I happen to be still alive, so uh, that's been uh, unusual. And uh, uh, someone mentioned on one occasion that when you mention the name Paul Ignatius, do you mean the man or the ship? <laughs> and uh, who was the Secretary of Navy who said that? His name was Ray Mabus, and that portrait you just photographed has his signature. United States Navy, Program Manager, DDG-51, Shipbuilding Program. We salute her captain and her crew, and we wish them Godspeed and smooth sailing as they join the fighting forces of the United States Navy. And now, if I may close just on a personal note, I was so pleased that my wife, Nancy, was chosen as the sponsor of this ship. It was a great honor for her. I'm pleased that she was able to swing the champagne bottle at the christening. I wish she could have been with, her, with us here today, but she's here in spirit, and her granddaughter, Dr. Elise Ignatius, is an able representative in her honor. USS Paul Ignatius, will be an effective deterrent to war, a beacon of hope to those who need compassionate assistance, and a faithful